Hey everyone, uh, sorry for my video coming rather late today. I actually had a few videos planned today, but it's been a very hectic day and I have a very hectic weekend ahead as well. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, I am giving away $100 cash money for those curious. Head on down to the description of the pin comment to enter. Now let's talk about the NPD. So the NPD report came out today courtesy of Matt Piscatella. For those who don't know, Matt Piscatella works for the MPD, so there literally is no more official source on U.S. video game sales than Matt Piscatella. And there's a lot of very, very interesting things uh, in this. And yes, folks, Nintendo Switch, for those curious, is still the number one selling platform for the month of March in the United States. That's now over two years. Like, I don't even know. It's like 25, 26 straight months of the Nintendo Switch being the top seller in terms of units every single month. And yes, that is an NPD record. Every month it extends is a new record. So Switch just keeps breaking sales records. Now, it also was the number one uh, system for dollar sales. And that's interesting since PlayStation 5 has typically, since launch, been the best dollar sales platform. After all, PlayStation 5 cost $200 more than a Switch uh, if you're getting the one version or $100 more if you get the all-digital version. Either way, both are more expensive than Switch. Uh, so you could sell significantly less units but make more money. Uh, that being said, Switch actually topped both this month. Uh, also, speaking of system sales, it's not as if things are going bad for PlayStation 5. Um, while there was no sales updates, surprisingly, for Xbox, and maybe this is just because Phil Spencer and uh, Microsoft have chosen not to share figures, so it's possible that unless the system was at the top of the charts that we're not going to hear about it, but... PlayStation 5 is also setting records. So people always accuse me, that, hey, you never say anything positive about PlayStation 5. Well, here's something extremely positive for Sony. And this is why a lot of the negativity surrounding some of the decisions they made, some of the Japanese stuff, probably doesn't mean squat to Sony. Because guess what? PlayStation 5, right now, at five months out, is the fastest selling video game console in terms of units and dollars in video game history in the United States. That's right. There has not been a system, a platform, handheld or otherwise, that has sold faster in the first five months on the market than PlayStation 5. And it's crazy because, you know, everyone figures, hey, look, you know, Sony's not making enough PlayStation 5. Sony's not making enough PlayStation 5s. The demand is insane for PlayStation 5. And the thing is, the demand is also insane for Switch. You want to know how you know demand is insane for Switch? When you go to any outlet in person out there, because they are selling in-person Switches, pretty much the Switch that docks with your TV is sold out everywhere, all the time. Like, the moment a new shipment comes in, it's gone. Switch Lite stay on the shelves because we're not as interested in Switch Lite in the United States. Actually, Switch Lite really only has some interest uh, in Japan. And even then, they would prefer the OG Switch if there was more of them. So, yeah, uh, Switch is also in short supply. But Nintendo obviously has that supply chain uh, clicking a bit better. Hence why we're getting more Switches out there and thus higher sales. Everything's in stupid high demand. And yeah, we all know Xbox has been sold out in the U.S. too. We just don't know what the sales are. Uh, we assume it's behind. Like the only time we've heard sales at all was when it uh, was 1 million units behind the launch sales. The PlayStation 5 launch sales were at 4.5 million for PlayStation 5. They were at 3.5 million for Xbox. And that's really the last time we've heard anything on Xbox sales. So... Uh, it is what it is. We don't actually have exact data, and I'm sure Sony will give us some exact data here soon on PlayStation 5. Uh, we'll never hear exact data for Xbox. So that's kind of the sad thing is a lot of the console sales are now really Nintendo versus Sony. Maybe that's the way it should be. I don't know, but especially with Microsoft focusing so much on services. Speaking of Microsoft services, what's very interesting is that there was a certain game that came out last month uh, that was on Game Pass day one. That game being Outriders. 
Outriders actually had a really nice debut on PlayStation platforms and Xbox platforms. It debuted at number three best-selling on both platforms. And it's really interesting because that does not include anyone who played it on Game Pass because Game Pass is a subscription service. It's not a retail sale because MPD tracks retail sales. So despite being on Game Pass, it doesn't look like it actually hurt the sales of the game. Now, that is what made this so interesting, and it's going to be interesting to see with MLB The Show as well coming up, because people kind of figured, hey, look, if a game's on Game Pass, it's going to tank on Xbox platforms in terms of actual sales. Looks like that's not the case at all. People are still buying games. So, hey, it is what it is. Uh, you know, you can obviously do some mental gymnastics and argue, well, maybe game sales in general are just significantly lower on Xbox. So, yeah, it's at number three, but number three out of, you know, barely anyone buying anything. Yes, that is some mental gymnastics you can attempt to do if you want. But according to Matt Piscatella, it sold really well on both platforms, and that is, that, that that's just an important note for anyone who thinks Game Pass is just going to kill game sales. Kind of looks like Game Pass is just working hand-in-hand -hand with game sales. It's just another option. So, is what it is. Uh, moving on, we uh, now have some great news on Monster uh, Monster Hunter. Well, we do have great news on Monster Hunter, but before I get to that, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, right? Been on the market forever. Well, guess what? It jumped up to number six during the month of March, and it is now officially the best-selling racing game of all time in United States history. There is not a, any other racing game that has sold more than Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That means Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is not only is is the best-selling racing game, and Smash Bros. is the best-selling fighting game. I wonder how many other genres Nintendo can maybe get best-selling ever at. Uh, it's it's going to be hard, you know, for Animal Crossing because because you got the the Sims and, and other games like that that are really huge, but. I don't know, man. Nintendo, just, they're really killing it. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe isn't even technically a new game. That's like a Wii U port. All right, moving on to Monster Hunter. So, obviously, Monster Hunter Rise came out at the end of last month. I think it was March 26th, if I remember right. Here's the deal. It debuted at number two for the entire month across all platforms. Obviously, number one on Nintendo Switch. But here's what's really interesting for it. While it was only on the market for a few days before the end of the month, uh, here's the thing. It is actually the second highest in terms of dollar sales game in Monster Hunter history. So it made more money than any other Monster Hunter game in U.S. history except for Monster Hunter World. And we're not, you might be thinking, oh, you're just talking launch. No, lifetime sales. So Monster Hunter 4, Monster Hunter 3, Monster Hunter Try, all those Monster Hunter games that came out in the past collectively made Less money than Monster Hunter Rise made in like three days. The only game that's made more than it is Monster Hunter World in that franchise. And Monster Hunter World, you know, obviously had a lot more data than just launch month. Because it's the lifetime sales of the game. So, could Monster Hunter Rise become the best-selling and, uh, you know, the most profitable Monster Hunter game for Capcom of all time in the U.S. We'll have to see. Obviously, we only have one month of sales. We'll, we'll see what happens in month two here. If the sales have continued to kill it this month or if the hype has died down. Well, we don't know. I'm not sure what the tail sales are going to be. I know they're doing decent in Japan, but that's Japan where Monster Hunter has always had a huge appeal. So we'll see. But uh, that's really good news for Capcom, of course. Uh, really good news for anyone that's hoping for more Monster Hunter games on Switch because... That's that's a lot of money. Capcom's got to be liking what Monster Hunter Rise is doing on Nintendo Switch. And this isn't even counting that it comes to PC next year. So there's going to be some, some extra sales then as well. All right. Um, with the first quarter of 2021 complete, the first three months, uh, Switch is the unit leader, which isn't a surprise. Switch was the number one selling system every single month this year in terms of units, but PlayStation 5 does have a slight edge in terms of dollar sales. So PlayStation 5 actually led in dollar sales in January and February. So even though Switch won dollar sales in March, it wasn't enough to overtake the overall dollar sales uh, profit for PlayStation 5 uh, for the year so far. And I, I feel like this is going to be, the like, it's really Nintendo versus Sony uh, going on out. Uh, so yeah, that's that's cool. Now, uh, I will briefly touch upon uh, the top-selling games on each platform. 
just because I know some people don't want to dig through all the data. There, there, there's just a lot of data, even though it's a huge thread on Twitter. There is, is a ton of ton of data. So let's just go with the top 20 sellers overall. So uh, at number one, we have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Reclaiming its number one spot. It's been at number one a lot the last year. Um, we have Monster Hunter Rise at number two. Outriders at number three. Super Mario 3D World uh, at number four. That was number one uh, last month. Uh, we have Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales at number five. We have Mario Kart 8. Um, I'm assuming that's 8 Deluxe. They just don't have the Deluxe part on there. Uh, at number six, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla at number seven. We have Animal Crossing New Horizons at number eight. We have Super Mario 3D All-Stars at number nine. Minecraft at number 10, Call of Duty Modern Warfare from 2019 at number 11, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at number 12, Pokemon Sword and Shield at 13, Mortal Kombat 11 at number 14, Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time at number 15. What's interesting about that is that was uh, at number 65 the month before, but last month, Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time launched on Switch. So that, you know, 50, you know, ranking jump was thanks to the Switch release. So, We'll see. I don't know if that was really, really... I, I presume that's really good sales. I have, I have no idea. Um, Third-party games are selling. So we have Breath of the Wild chiming in here at number 16. Uh, Madden NFL 21 at number 17. NBA 2K 21 at number 18. Super Mario Party at number 19. And then FIFA 21 rounding out the top 20 at number 20. Now that was for all platforms. Now let's go uh, year to date. Uh, so this is year-to-date top 10. So this is basically January, February, and March. Uh, what are the best-selling games in, uh, in, in, you know, in the United States uh, for the first quarter of the year? Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is at number one. Super Mario 3D World is at number two. Marvel Spider-Man at number three. Monster Hunter Rise already is at number four. Assassin's Creed Valhalla at five. Mario Kart 8 at six. Minecraft at seven. Madden NFL 21 at eight. Animal Crossing New Horizons at 10, and then Outriders that just came out as well at number 10. All right, so now we get to the individual platforms. Um, so Nintendo, uh, which is all Switch, by the way. Th these are not anything else. We have uh, Monster Hunter Rise at number one for March. We have followed by Super Mario 3D World, then Mario Kart 8, then Animal Crossing New Horizons, Super Mario 3D All-Star, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, then Pokemon Sword and Shield, then Breath of the Wild, then at number 9, we got Super Mario Party, and rounding out that 10 is Luigi's Mansion 3. Glad to see Luigi's Mansion 3 getting some love. On um, PlayStation platforms, so this would include PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. We have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War at number 1, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales at number 2, Outriders at 3, Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 4, Madden at 5, Call of Duty Modern Warfare at 6, Minecraft at 7, Ghost of Tsushima at 8, NBA 2K21 at 9, and Mortal Kombat at number 11. Now, getting into Xbox, we have, and this would include Xbox One and Xbox Series S slash X, we have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War at number 1, Assassin's Creed Valhalla at number 2, Outriders at 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 at 4, Mortal Kombat 11 at 5, Madden NFL 21 at 6, Forza Horizon 4 at number 7, It Takes Two, baby! God, I love that. I probably just got copyright claim for that. Uh, it takes two at number eight. Uh, Marvel's Adventures at number nine. And Watch Dogs Legion coming in at number 10 for last month. So uh, good sales all around. I would say everyone's probably pretty pleased with the way things are going. Obviously, um, Nintendo, Sony, and Xbox continue to have supply issues, continue to be... Um, it's not really supply issues. It's demand issues. Demand is insane. These platform holders have to be extremely pleased with how high demand is. So, hey, more power to them. Uh, that is your MPD uh, for March. Man, it took 13 plus minutes to get through it all, but you know what? It was worth it because it is awesome. Not a lot of opinions in this one other than, hey, everyone's killing it. The industry is the healthiest it's maybe ever been. So take that for what you will. All right, folks. I'm Nathaniel Robojets from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.